A lonely chain of hydrogen gas clouds the size of a massive galaxy has been spotted floating out in space and scientists have no idea where it comes from. An international team of astronomers made the discovery thanks to the South African Meerkat Telescope. What makes this mysterious uh, is that no stars were spotted nearby. One of the scientists, Professor Thomas Jarrett of the University of Cape Town, says it's inconceivable for cloud the size of a galaxy to simply be floating in space. He joins us now to tell us more about the significance of the find. Prof, thank you so much for your time this evening. I guess the simple question is, or maybe simple but complicated, how is it that we came about this discovery and what does this discovery actually mean? Hello. Greetings from uh, the United States. Well, uh, the thing about this cloud is it's uh, massive. And uh, massive clouds this is the fuel that creates stars. And this is how galaxies form. Um, and so we have basically the fuel uh, without the galaxy. Um, and that's very, very puzzling. Um, we've seen smaller versions of this for many years now. Um, but this is by far, far the largest one we've ever seen. And uh, we can't explain uh, what's going on. Furthermore, it's located in proximity to what's called a galaxy group, where there are many galaxies are gravitationally bound. We think it's falling in. And so you have all this fuel that's that's pouring into this group, and it actually should be doing something, such as forming stars. So the uh, you asked about the implications of this, and that's well, it uh, we have to look at uh, how uh, we understand the galaxies form and stars form, and something is preventing um, uh, stars from forming with this uh, mysterious cloud. Um, and you know, further follow-up uh, is needed with Meerkat, which you mentioned. <clears throat> we, uh, you cannot, you know, discover these things without very, very sensitive, powerful telescopes. And Meerkat is a game changer in that regard. That uh, I think we're going to find a lot more of these. Yeah. Professor, I mean, as you're saying that it's fuel without the galaxy, and you've never had before this cloud of this magnitude without a galaxy nearby. Could it present itself with other forms of hypotheses regarding other galaxies? And I know this is going to sound very much like Star Trek at the moment, but an alternative universe perhaps, or even a different dimension perhaps, or even coming out of the black hole? I mean, what exactly does it say about what we still do not know yet about our galaxy? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, these, these things are very, very far away. And... Uh, we, we've seen them something that happened far in the past, in fact. And so uh, we investigate these interesting mysteries well, well after the fact that they, they've happened. <clears throat> and we have very little, uh, you know, uh, evidence of facts. And so we spend most of our time astronomers gathering facts and trying to figure out what happened, if you might, if you will. It's the, the, we're at the scene of the crime and it's all very, just we have little pieces here and there. Now, what you ask, what what else could be alternatives to this? Um, my favorite alternative is that this this was this is a remnant of some massive uh, accident that happened in the far past, where the gas, the fuel, was stripped away from the original galaxies as they smashed into each other, and uh, this is what we have left over. Now, what's amazing is that it's as big as a galaxy, though it's left over. And um, it in itself should be creating a new galaxy. Um, and so that, that's mysterious. Now, whether it could be coming from, let's say, an alternative universe, well, you know, perhaps. But, uh, you know, if we use Occam's razors that, that says that what's the most likely scenario, that wouldn't be up there. It's very high. Um, on the other hand, uh, you know, f this thing could be the tip of the iceberg on uh, what is actually going on. And, uh, you know, I should say that astronomers, th these are mysteries. We don't know. They're all, we don't know what's going on, you know, most yeah. of the time in the universe. Uh, we're just figuring it out. <clears throat> yeah. 
Uh, that should be exciting, both exciting and maybe even frightening for those that are in uh, astronomy and for mm. us who have to receive the information, of course, uh, Prof. But, you know, when you're speaking about um, the role of hydrogen in the formation of galaxies, can you just, just take us through the significance of mm. this, like in terms of exactly how does hydrogen then form part of this formation um, of galaxies and, and speaking to which what we now understand about this now cloud uh, that has been found floating? Mm, sure. Well, we have the laws of nature, the laws of physics, and we have the most um, common element in the universe, which is hydrogen. If you take hydrogen, a little bit of helium, um, and then the laws of nature, which essentially gravity in this situation, it'll pull that gas together. And over time, and there's lots of time in the universe, um, it will slowly collapse. It'll form disks and collapse and stars were formed and, you know, over eons of time, over, let's say billions of years, um, galaxies will form. And they do it over and over. We see it all throughout the universe. Um, we have what we think are universal laws, meaning the laws of physics here on Earth. They work far away in the distant universe and in the distant past of the universe. And in that sense, we can figure out <clears throat> how galaxies come to form. Um, and, and so we've built up these scenarios in which we under what's called galaxy evolution, how galaxies form and evolve over time. Um, and, you know, hydrogen is the fuel that creates these, these wonderful galaxies. And we live in one called the Milky Way. And, and so this great mysterious cloud that's floating out there is as big as the Milky Way, but it hasn't formed any stars yet, but it has to at some point. Um, and uh, I, as I noted earlier, I think that these are gonna be more common because of telescopes like Meerkat, which are just revealing, you know, these distant objects for the first time because Meerkat is so powerful. So sensitive. It's just an amazing telescope. I'm very, very, as an astronomer, very happy with it. Yeah. Professor, very quickly, before we uh, leave, uh, uh, you know, our time is not on our side, but how much mm. catch up are we doing to what has already been out there and yet we're discovering it to what the reality is now that we are yet to discover? How behind are we exactly? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question. Um, here's the here's what happens with science is that you build a new instrument, you make all these discoveries, you say, wow, you have a little bit better understanding of the universe, but it also creates 10 more questions. So every little discovery, 10 new questions. Um, and so it seems like we're always chasing, you know, a full understanding of any kind of phenomenon. The more we learn about it, the more we seem to be uh, further away from fully understanding it. I know that's not a very satisfying answer, but that this is this is science, and um, this is what uh, I enjoy about it. In fact, is that uh, every day I learn something new. Yeah. 